All right, looking at cross sections and how we create them in geography. Today we're looking at a landform here called Rock Mountain and it's a mountain obviously we can tell by the shape of the contour lines but we're looking today for a few different things we're going to figure out the distance between contour lines and then we're also going to create a cross section from point A to point B um, which is obviously going to involve figuring out what each of these elevations actually are so Looking here, we can see some of the elevations are marked on the map already. We can see this is 1500. If there's no unit of measurement in there, we're just going to assume that it's metres. So we've got 1500 metres here and 1000 metres here. And we've got one, two, three, four lines in between. So we can say very easily that we've got 1000 metres here this will be 1100, 1200, 1300, 1400 and 1500. So they're all the same distance apart, each of the contour lines. I'll just write that in. Uh, so no matter the distance between each of the lines, they're the same actual height above sea level. So having a look here we can see there's more gentle slope over this section of the page where the contour lines are further away and a much steeper section of the um, mountain or the landform over this side where it rises in height quite dramatically over short distances on the ground whereas over here for you to get you know to rise up 100 meters we are having to travel quite a distance over ground to get there which tells us that's a much gentler slope okay so having a look at how to actually do a cross section we need to have a look at point a have a look at point b and we need to look at every single contour line along so you need to take a piece of scrap paper and you need to mark point a and you need to mark point B. So your job now is to have a look at every single contour line that crosses over where your um, cross section is going to be. So this line from A to B, every point along that line you need to be marking on your little piece of scrap paper and we're going to use that information to create our cross section. So we know that point B is over here, this line, and we know that that's a thousand, so we know that point B then is going to be a hundred because the difference between the lines is a hundred meters, and so this is going to be 900 because the difference between 800 and a thousand is 900, so that makes perfect sense. So point B is 900 meters. And we're starting to climb up toward the mountain. Okay, so we've got 800, 900, 1000, 1100, 1200, 1300, 1400, 1500, and that will make, make this one here 1600. Because this connects, we can see that's all along the same contour line, it intercepts our point, our sort of cross section here at this section and also at this section. Now both of these are along that same contour line which is 1600 metres above sea level. So when we come to that one they're both going to be identical. So let's go through now and mark each of these exactly as you see them in exactly the same spot along on your graph. Now you can write in the height as you do that or you can do it afterward depending on what you would like to do. So having a look here we've got 900 and then this one here you can see all the way along we follow it. We have 1000 so that's this point here. 
Okay, 1,000. And we know that each of these represents the same contour interval of 100 metres. So we've got 900 metres, 1,000, which makes this 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160. Well, I should actually do it properly, shouldn't I? I'm just being lazy and dropping off the last zero. Okay, so this is also 1600 and then we start on this side to start dropping off. So we can see down here it's 900 and we're building up toward the top of that mountain. So we've got 1600, 1600, this one becomes 1500, 1400, 1300, 12, 11, 10, well, 10, 100, 1,000, 900, and this point here is also 900. So having a look here, that's just a lake, we're going to disregard it. We don't need to know that for grade 8 geography. Okay, so you can see it's a lot easier to write in up this end. It's a lot more squishy putting your numbers in. Um, so the main point is that your line intersects exactly where that comes along the line here, okay? If that's off, then your whole cross section is going to be off. So as long as your point starts where it needs to at the top of the page, you can draw a line down here and write 1300 where you've got a bit more room, okay? But as long as it matches up with the lines directly along this section here. Okay, so we've got all of our measurements in now and we've got them all mapped on here. We're going to look at plotting them now on this map. So this one has already been done for us, which is excellent. But if we have a look here, the width of your graph down here is only ever going to be the width of your points that you're actually going to be mapping. So A to B beginning to finish okay if your cross section is only this small then your um, graph that you're plotting it against will only be that small as well all right so there's no need to have a big giant long one if your cross section is a lot smaller than that now looking at this axis we can see that goes from 600 to 1700 Alright, so that's a pretty um, broad range. The main thing that you want to make sure is, see my smallest one here is 900 and my biggest one is 1600. So as long as I've got a range up this side from 900 to 1600, it's going to fit my cross section. This one's a bit broader um, and that's fine as well. Okay, so having a look, the next thing to do, and this is one of the most important tasks, to make sure that you get the right shape. Okay, we've got point A labelled on there and that's already in here for us luckily. So point A is at 900 metres. Now, the next dot point that we're gonna do is gonna line up directly with where we put that line on the page. And again, we're coming all the way up and we're looking at bang 900, okay? You don't need to draw that line in, but you do need to make sure it's straight. So some people like to take a ruler and they use that along this way to line up that with where it needs to be along this axis of the graph. Okay, so this one here is 1,000, 1,100, 1,200, and you're doing this very neatly, grade 8, you're not scribbling like I am. And you're probably doing it in pencil too, in case you get anything wrong. Okay, 1400 is here, all the way up to 1500, 1600. And these again are perfectly lined up directly with that point. See, that's a little off, that's wrong. You're going to do it very neatly. Again, 1600. 
14 and you can see they're starting to get a lot closer together and you can see that instead of this gentle slope with them a bit further apart it's starting to come down really quite heavily because the lines are closer together, the contour lines. Alright, 1200, 1100, 1000 and then we have point B at 900 metres. Okay, so your next job is to connect the dots and that's a really easy part. Generally it's okay to sort of round off the tops of mountains and things like that. Okay, you don't need to use a ruler and make it exact, just a fluid line. Um, oops, just realised you can't see everything on there. Just a fluid line to connect those dots is good. Now, the next thing that you need to do, we don't need that anymore, is we need to colour it in. So with your amazing colouring skill like mine, we do that. And that's really just to make that landform stand out and check that that's the actual shape of it and what it does look like. Um, finally, you need to create a label. So let's say Rock Mountain is the name of our landform. So we'll say cross section. of Rock Mountain. Now it could be any cross section because you could have drawn a line, you know, from here to here or here to here or here to here, anywhere on that form, uh, landform, okay? So very specifically it's from point A to point B and we need to make sure our title reflects that. So cross section of Rock Mountain from point A to point B. Okay, beautiful. That, grade eight, is how you complete a cross section.